So in today's third episode of Thinking Out of the Box in the Shadow of COVID, I'm interviewing Dr. Lonnie Reisman, who is the CEO and founder of Health Reveal, a startup company based in New York, uh, which TriVentures has invested in not too long ago. And Lonnie, perhaps to kick it off, you could share with the audience a little bit about what Health Reveal has been doing uh, pre-corona. And then we can dive in deeper to some of the specific initiatives that the company and yourself have undertaken around COVID-19. What we've created is a platform that relates uh, individual characteristics of patients uh, to the medical guidelines that are relevant to their well-being and where there's a discrepancy between how a patient should be treated based on the guidelines and how they're actually treated. Uh, we actually communicate uh, that insight to the treating physician uh, or care management team or the patient themselves. So the, the ultimate goal is kind of the consistency, uh, perhaps the democratization of clinical excellence uh, for patients with chronic disease who, um, again, without optimal therapy, will suffer avoidable consequences like strokes, like heart attacks, like that. If we can identify earlier the right interventions, and there are good interventions for chronic disease, we can actually not only have an impact on the trajectory of the disease, but obviously also on the healthcare economics for the health system. And, and around this, you know, which is, of course, you know, chronic disease accounts for a huge, huge uh, proportion of, of healthcare expenditure. Um, where are you seeing now, specifically around, around this pandemic, areas where, where Health Rebuild can, can make a difference and an impact and, and maybe talk about a couple of the specific initiatives that you're undertaking? Uh, uh, sure. So um, as uh, all of uh, your portfolio, our portfolio partners know, uh, the patients who are most susceptible to the complications of COVID-19 uh, are people who are older, um, people who have chronic diseases uh, like cardiovascular disease. We hear about hypertension and diabetes all the time. Uh, and obviously patients who are immunosuppressed are more susceptible to the disease. Um, so the orientation that, that, that Health Reveals brought to the problem is that if in fact we can isolate um, high-risk patients uh, by virtue of not only their comorbidities, uh, but the mismanagement of, of, of their comorbidities. Um, we, in fact, can optimize uh, their clinical care, uh, hopefully uh, keep them away from the virus, uh, but in the event that they do get infected, uh, at least their underlying clinical, uh, clinical uh, chronic conditions uh, will be optimally managed. Uh, and one of the concerns we've had is that as people sort of list the comorbidities that are associated with bad outcomes, there's almost a sort of a binary orientation where you have or you don't have hypertension, you have or you don't have diabetes. Uh, and clearly there's a wide spectrum of control uh, as it relates to those conditions. So I'm sure all of uh, the listeners know about uh, hemoglobin A1C levels um, or optimal uh, blood pressure management levels. Uh, if an optimal hemoglobin A1C is say seven, um, there's gotta be a difference in terms of susceptibility for somebody who's got an A1C of say 11 or 12 versus, versus that seven. And then you throw in other issues like their lipid levels, uh, diabetic with blood pressure issues, kidney failure, uh, or at least chronic kidney disease. And you can identify a group that would be not only susceptible, uh, but likely to have a worse outcome. I don't know if I told you this. So um, actually, uh, this whole um, you know, initiative of, of interviewing our CEOs, it was something that we had on the back burner, but before the... the the pandemic and and then we paused it because it didn't seem you know like a very good time to uh, get the attention of our, our of our CEOs and management to to join this effort. But really, the um, the person that uh, actually inspired me to do it now <laughs> was you. Uh, and yeah, uh, yeah, actually, it was in that first um, board meeting right after things got really bad in the United States, uh, which was not a pre-scheduled board meeting and had a very kind of dramatic title very, very soon after things got really bad in the United States. And when I heard you talk about the, the coalition and how quickly you yourself mobilized with, you know, other people that you know in the community, to set up something very proactive um, that not only utilizes Health Reveal's uh, platform, but also makes a real effort to bring in other groups and, and, and do something with impact for you know, the New York uh, community, which could hopefully be replicated uh, around the country. That was kind of the, the trigger for saying we have to do something to not only share with our own portfolio, but with other groups in this space on how you can really take a really crappy situation and think about doing something very proactive that can, can deliver real impact. 
and and so I have to thank you for uh, giving me that uh, <laughs> that inspiration. <laughs> and, and, and thank you for that. And if nothing else, it, it, it vindicates the purpose of uh, board meetings for all, <laughs> for all the portfolio companies who will resist going forward. You never know when there might be a little pearl that will uh, interest uh, you or somebody else. So I'm uh, glad we could be a little bit helpful, and hopefully we we can translate the insights and the opportunity into something that will impact both the lives of. Uh, uh, the very, very many uh, vulnerable patients out there. Um, and, as we, and as we see uh, the disease uh, sweeping across the country, or actually converging sort of toward the Midwest, obviously we have the two coasts. Um, one of the things we're trying to do working with other partners is get ahead of it. Um, so where it's anticipated, uh, if you think about what I just said, let, let, let's identify those patients, give them everything that they need. Um, hopefully they won't get infected, um, but even if they do, uh, at least they theoretically won't be uh, as susceptible to the, the ravages of the uh, of the virus as, uh, as as some have seen. Ani, you're not you're not a first timer. Uh, you really grew up in in the healthcare industry. You've um, you're definitely what we would you know categorize as a seasoned executive in the space. Um, just for the you know for the sake of the audience. Uh, Lonnie is a physician. He's been in the healthcare industry for many, many years. He successfully built a previous startup which sold to Aetna for hundreds of millions of dollars, which he later serves as the chief medical officer of Aetna and has a deep, deep understanding of healthcare, the complexities of healthcare, and um, you know, sometimes the conflicting, I guess, incentives and interest in our healthcare system in the United States. What do you think, do you think that healthcare will be different in the aftermath of, of uh, COVID in terms of you know, the adoption of new technologies and, and anything else you know, from your, your perspective? Yeah, I think, uh, I certainly hope it will be different um, because it wasn't so great before. Um, so certainly, and one of the things we're seeing now, which is particularly disturbing and something that's been prevalent um, for my entire career, um, is for, it relates, for example, to uh, disparities in care uh, based on race uh, and, and income and what we're starting to see uh, in the United States. And, you know, anybody who's you know, thought about it would have anticipated this, is that part of the vulnerability that I, I, I talked about before uh, relates to uh, minorities, some of its income, um, some of its underlying risk factors. I think a big part of it is neglect of their underlying chronic diseases. Um, so there's a lot of talk again about hypertension and, 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 and diabetes, for example. So hopefully um, there'll be a, a greater awareness of uh, how uneven uh, certainly the United States is as a society and, and providing uh, appropriate, not only clinical care, but the sorts of services that, 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 that people need and, uh, we can elaborate uh, on that. Um, I think the other thing that will be highlighted um, is the role of technology in, again, identifying and connecting with and tracking patients um, who are vulnerable uh, based on some of the, uh, the, the, the parameters, the dimensions uh, that we, we, we've talked about. And the last thing I hope is that we'll get away from this sort of bureaucratic uh, tendency uh, focused on revenues, which obviously are critically important, um, but at some level, they seem to have sort of transcended the value of clinically appropriate care as it relates to the, to the focus and the orientation of, of, of physicians and nurses and practitioners. So will there be a shift in the focus of the EMR in terms of you know, documenting every step, making sure billing is done appropriately? That doesn't have to be discarded, but certainly there needs to be a much, much greater orientation about doing what medicine was obviously intended to do, which is to care for patients. And I think we've lost that. Um, over the years, certainly in the United States. So, so I was listening to a podcast you were um, uh, part of last week, and, and uh, the the interviewer um, several times and rightly so referred to you as a legend, <laughs> a legend, <laughs> a legend in in healthcare. Because really, um, Lonnie has has really. Um, built a, a very prolific career in this industry and is well respected and and well known and um and i'm you know i'm just wondering if if in that career there's been anything that kind of prepared you for this very unexpected and enormous challenge i, I think i think there, there are two uh, aspects of, of of that that have been helpful one is, is clinically um so um Thank you for all the kind words that uh, sort of associated with that is, is the reality that I'm old. Um, and um, so I will tell you that I, uh, I was an intern in 1981 in New York City. Uh, and we saw young people coming into the hospital who were breathless. Sound familiar? Um, and had these bizarre patterns on their chest x-rays. Also familiar. 
So I, uh, as it happens, saw the first HIV cases, um, and uh, we can talk about that forever, obviously. Uh, but the parallels are pretty striking. Uh, we were scared. We didn't know what it was. We didn't know how it spread. Um, we didn't know uh, who was particularly at risk, uh, and we kind of got through it. So I was directly uh, impacted by that, and then we've been through other um, types of pandemics, um, which we all talk about, uh, SARS, Ebola, Zika, uh, and, and, and now this. So I, I guess I've, I've kind of seen this movie before. When I was younger, I was actually directly involved with CARE, and um, I, I think there are two things. One is um, I my, my level of anxiety um, at the outset was appropriate um, because I had a sense of what was coming on uh, coming, uh, but I also have a sense of hope. Um, we, we, we get through these things. Um, so that's on sort of the, the clinical side of my life. And, um, and I should mention you know, that, that I am involved sort of in academic clinical medicine a lot. I'm on the Science and Quality Committee at the American College of Cardiology. Um, we approve all the guidelines that go up, <coughs> go out. So I'm, I'm I'm sort of immersed in, in that world and very interested in, in, in the science around COVID, for example, and some of the cardiovascular issues. Uh, on the business side, I think the thing that probably prepared me both, most, so after clinical medicine, I started um, uh, active health management, my first company. Uh, then I was kind of a, a bureaucrat in a suit at Aetna for a number of years, and now I'm, I'm back to being uh, an entrepreneur. And uh, I think running startups prepares you for this sort of thing because um, uh, every day, not to this degree, of course, not the depth of the challenge that we're facing now, uh, but you've got to be nimble, you've got to adjust, you've got to be mindful about cash, for example, um, and, and delighting your customers uh, in many situations where they're distracted by other things. Um, so again, by virtue of being disruptive and innovative, um, you're not in the mainstream with regard to what your customers are interested in, sort of the innovator's dilemma, uh, to quote um, a legend, uh, a true legend, um, recently passed by the way, Clayton Christensen. Mm -hmm. um, but, but I think the, the adaptation that comes uh, with uh, running a startup and also an appreciation that, um, you know, when there's a good outcome, as there was with Active Health, <clears throat> that's what's remembered. But um, kind of the day before, you're kind of the same lunatic or fool or dreamer that you were, um, uh, you know, for your whole life, basically. Uh, and then after the fact, my good, what, what incredible insights, you know, what a remarkable uh, accomplishment. Um, so I think the, 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 the sort of the, the volatility uh, and the instability of an entrepreneur's life, um, I think, serves us well in, in an environment like this. I couldn't agree more. And, you know, what's, I guess, most important also part of an entrepreneurial uh, journey is, is just, um, you know, the, the, the mistakes or the failures or whatever you want to call them in the past, the hurdles are not, not, um, not lost, you know, they, they're, they're reapplied and, and, and you learn from what you've done in the past and um, usually you, you, you react um, sharper and smarter in, in the next time a similar challenge approaches you. So. Yeah, I think the clinical term is called scar tissue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. This has been great, Lonnie. I really appreciate the time you took to, um, to talk to me and share your insights. And uh, we're thrilled to be part of this company. Um, it's one of our more recent investments. So we're looking forward to, to um, what's to come, not only in respect of uh, COVID-19, but, but going forward. Great Thanks talking to you. And stay safe and be well. And uh, I look forward to seeing you in person. Thanks for doing this. Thanks.